Hello there, this is Jimmy the Fontmeister, and this go around we'd like to talk about class kerning and Fontographer. Now, let's just take a brief overview of the methods of kerning and Fontographer so that we can kind of back into this situation. The first method would be that we would use auto kern. If you use auto kern, uh, you're going to be trusting that. Uh, photographer will average all the characters uh, by analyzing each glyph and uh, kind of splitting the difference. So for most professional font designers don't really appreciate that. And there's just some fonts that it just can't work. Um, say you had a swash character like Trajan has the, the big fat stem on the letter capital R sticking out. That will not work with auto kerning. So there's just times when you can't use auto kerning. So for the average person, the average font, they're just going to use auto kerning. But let's say you want to get into a little more detail. Of course, you know that you can come in here and you can uh, manually kern in the metrics window by going to click on the second character and get the K line and just kern that thing uh, to where it's pleasing to your eyes. Now you might notice down here the kerning value is minus 240. Let's let's just take a look here. What if I had another kern pair and I click on the zero and I kern it and what if I decided that minus 240 looks pretty good for the T as well? Well as you can see if I'm going to use this method, I'd have to come into the metrics window since I, I don't like auto kerning. And then I'm either going to have to be dragging these characters around and manually, uh, visually kerning them. Or let's say I, I get this brilliant idea to make my life easier by saying I'm going to use the same value for some of these characters. Well, even so, it would be, you know, you're probably going to have to do all the vowels. A, W A W E W I W O T A T I T O. So you can see that this is still not going to be a very friendly process. Okay, so now that we've got a little bit of an introduction, I want to show you why we want to talk about class kerning. So we go to the metrics window, kerning assistance, and you can see that we we can say whatever you do to WO, do the same thing to TO. So then you'd only have to uh, decide what your metrics are for WO, it will be automatically applied to TO. And of course, you could make uh, several sets of pairs here. Now, I want you to notice the, the link all checkbox means that if you later on made a change to WO, it would automatically be applied to TO. So generally you're going to want to have the uh, link all uh, checkbox checked. Notice that when you get this done you could save it to a file. You could open up a completely different font and load that file into that font. So once you get started it's a pretty good deal. One of the things I wanted to focus on during this video was the problem of entering special characters. Special characters have to have uh, quotes around them, single quotes. It's what is known as delimiters, so that you can distinguish between characters. So let's say you had uh, the single quote, you wanted to use it as a, in, in a kerning pair. You would have to put a single quote, single quote, and single quotes so that it's encased in single quotes. And let's say that um, you wanted to uh, use a period in a uh, kerning pair. You would have to put single quote, period, single quote. So as you can see, any special characters that you work on have to have single quotes. Also, if you're going to put a series of them, then you can put a comma. That's the next delimiter. So I'm going to go ahead and say here is a comma, single quote, comma, single quote, 
What about double quotes? Well, I'll put comma, single quote, double quote, single quote. So as you can see, the commas and the single quotes can be used as delimiters. So that might help you when you're trying to put special characters into the kerning equivalency. Now we've got one more problem that we need to talk about for kerning. When you're here in the metrics window, you're going to find out pretty quick that you can't uh, put Unicode values in this window. So what this means is any characters above decimal 256 uh, are going to be in a different code page. And in order to enter those, the only way you can do that in photographer is to select them. So here we see we have our first code page in Arial going all the way to 256. Now it switches into a different code page. This, these are mathematical symbols. And uh, you can see we get down here. It looks like we have some Greek. So therefore, we're in a different code page now. Code pages go in sets of 256. So you have a, a set of 256 and then another 256 for another a code page or another language. And so in order to get those characters into the metrics window, what I'm going to do, I'm going to say that uh, I will find here, let me find a lowercase character in Greek. What I'm going to do with that one is first put it on the clipboard. Then I'm going to select this uppercase character. Let's do the sigma. Now if I go to the metrics window, open it, I'll automatically have that. Now the only way that I'm going to get the um, Unicode character in there is to paste it. I'm doing uh, Control V or Command V on the Mac. So now I would be able to kern this once I could get it in here. But unfortunately, this is the only way that you can uh, get characters from different code pages into uh, Fantarifer's uh, metrics window. Uh, you'd probably want to go to something like FontLab Studio if you're doing a lot of Unicode kerning. There's something else I wanted to show you about the metrics window. You can click here on this text link. And if there's a uh, text file that has been created with kerning pairs, you can select it. And you can review those kerning pairs. So as you can see, that's a lot more fun than having to go in here and type all the kerning pairs manually. So a lot of font designers have a, an ASCII text file of kerning pairs to allow them to quickly review uh, how things are going with the kerning. Let's go back here to the metrics window and kerning assistance. Here we see we have our classes. I'm going to say that uh, I want SO and TO to be kerned the same way that WA is. All right? That is the extent of uh, class kerning in Photographer. Now, there are uh, a lot more features in, that can be used with OpenType fonts. If you were to use FontLab Studio, you have quite a range of features to create class kerning for OpenType fonts, but that's the extent of the class kerning in Photographer. So that ought to get you started on some of the tips and tricks of uh, using class kerning in Photographer. There's a lot more details in your user manual and in the Photographer tech notes. And as always, let us know if there's some other topics you'd like to see covered in this series.